Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Search Engine Journal webinar. Today, we will be joined by AJ Rama from iQuanti, who will be talking about how to prioritize SEO initiatives for greatest business impact. We all know the importance of SEO, but it can be difficult to know where to get started. Today, we're going to show you how you can focus your time and resources where it really counts. My name's Heather Campbell, and I'll be moderating for you today. Ajay, can you tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into some of the webinar housekeeping tips? Uh, great, thanks, Heather. Hello, everyone. Um, I am Ajay Rama. I head uh, products for iQuanti. iQuanti is a performance um, a digital marketing company uh, focused on using data uh, and insights from data to really solve marketing problems. I have about 20 odd years of experience in uh, using large amounts of data and building algorithms on that data to glean insights to solve marketing problems. And in specific, the last 10 years, um, most of my team and I spent time uh, crawling millions of pages, extracting hundreds of variables from those millions of pages and reverse engineering the Google's al uh, algorithm over and over again. Um, um, and all of this, the outcome of all of this research is, is ALPS, our uh, uh, SEO enterprise software. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, today we'll talk about some of our learnings from that research uh, and how to kind of really optimize or how to prioritize your SEO, SEO initiatives. Uh, prior to iQuanti, I kind of, uh, uh, you know, built marketing analytics software for companies like uh, Oracle and AOL. Um, and uh, excited about uh, speaking to you guys today. Heather, back to you. Great. Thanks, Ajay. So, um, you know, if during today's webinar, you have any questions, comments, please feel free to leave them in the webinar questions box at the bottom of your screen. Also, we will be asking a few poll questions throughout the webinar where you will be able to participate and give us your thoughts. We will also have Q&A at the end of the presentation, so make sure you stick around for that. And we will do our best through the webinar to link any resources or tools in the chat and on social media. But of course, if you have any questions, make sure you ask. After the webinar, we ask that you do stick around for a short survey. It'll take less than five minutes. This information really helps us gauge what works, what topics you especially are interested in, and how we can make SEJ webinars more useful for you. Lastly, this entire webinar will be recorded and made available through a recap post on Search Engine Journal this following Tuesday, but we are gonna to try to get that recording out to you a little bit sooner this time, so be look out in your email over the next day or two. Without any further ado, let's dive into the webinar. Ajay, it's all yours. Thanks, Heather. So, um... While I did talk about all the research that me and my team have done in understanding Google's algorithm, today we are not going to focus on that algorithm. We're not going to focus on SEO tactics. I think there's enough of them available all over the internet. But what we'll really focus on is how to get the most out of the SEO that you already know, right? You know, unfortunately, there's not much spoken on that, right? So we'll focus on how to use what you already know and figuring out which pages to really focus on and what parameters to focus on and increase the likelihood of your ranking, right? Then we'll also try to focus, uh, understand um, how to get to the SEO landscape, right? You know, for your company, um, you know, really understand what's the maximum value that SEO can drive, what you can expect from SEO and how to eventually um, you know, identify a next set of um, uh, initiatives that will give you the most, right? Uh, with that, I think, you know, we'll jump into the webinar. Uh, for the, uh, for, for again, there's various ways in which you could kind of categorize SEO activities. For today's discussion, we kind of took two dimensions and kind of uh, grouped them um, um, you know, uh, segmented these activities. One is the frequency with which they happen. The other one is the strategic impact these uh, activities uh, can have. The first use case that I'll talk about is really around optimizing pages. I think uh, uh, this is probably something that we all do 
whether it is a, 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 a one member shop whether it is a large organization whether it's a startup right um, optimizing pages is something that we kind of you know it's a day-to-day -day seo activity and we'll talk about um, that the second group is basically more around planning prioritization building business cases and things like that you know i've seen more um you know large teams and large organizations focus more in that area but you know it could be used by anyone so we'll we'll talk about how to um, um you know uh, identify the opportunity in our second use case the third area is basically activities that are done once in a while right you know the big you know kind of projects that span across months but can have a big strategic impact right things like domain consolidation things like site redesign things like you know trying to kind of uh, uh, take take your domain and kind of split it into multiple uh, subdomains things like that um, so uh, we'll unfortunately because of uh, you know uh, the lack of time we'll not focus on that section today we'll only talk about the uh, other two uh, and probably maybe kind of uh, create a separate webinar for uh, strategic initiators of sorts uh, so let's jump in to the uh, first use case which is really about uh, how to um, you know uh, rank better for a page so today i think the the usual ways one ends up you know trying to optimize a page it could be again you know your specific uh, use case or your specific need could be a little different but broadly here are some reasons you know why um, uh, somebody ends up there right one is you're looking at a page you're reviewing your site and you suddenly feel that hey you know something needs to change here this page is not necessarily representing what it should or you you have a goal you're tasked with a goal to actually improve ranking for a particular page or you're doing an audit and then you kind of end up on a page that uh, you know the audit throws up a few gaps on a particular page and you kind of go to that page to make those changes these are some of the ways you um, you know end up focusing on improvement or you are writing a new piece of content and you want to do your best to kind of uh, rank for that right so a few ways how you get there but the typical the approach that we take today right most people take today has a few challenges one uh, m most of the tools today kind of give almost like checklist kind of uh, outputs around what needs to improve on those pages uh, unfortunately there's too many variables uh, that that you know um, seo uh, optimization involves and trying to optimize every variable is a lot of work right and doing that for every page will take too much of your effort and probably not the best way to kind of actually um, you know try and win an seo right the second challenge is a lot of i've seen a lot of seos focus on one aspect of seo like you know maybe you're doing a technical analysis and then that threw up a few gaps on your page and you kind of go down the path of fixing those things right and uh, or you 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 kind of uh, you know trying to improve you know your content of the page um, right um, you know focusing on a specific aspect of seo sometimes doesn't yield the best results yes it may kind of give you some push but we have to understand that google is looking at all aspects of seo together right like they're looking at hey do you have for a given query they're looking at pages that are most relevant for that for that query then they are saying hey given the nature of the industry uh, does this website which has this relevant page for this query um, have an authority in this particular area and if they do have the authority and if the page is relevant then they're looking at is there something on this page or this site that may provide a bad experience right no so those then they're looking at all those things together and then figuring out where they should kind of rank you so if you are trying to optimize one specific aspect of seo um, that may not kind of you maybe you don't have you know uh, relevant content but if you trying to optimize the page to rank for that particular query uh, without working on content but trying to improve the, the the technical aspects it may not yield you the results right and vice versa the third challenge is uh, again you know a very common challenge is the turnaround time so we end up 
you know making all these changes then you know um without knowing whether re it'll really work or not we um uh, we try to push it for production that involves basically sometimes especially with large companies it involves approval of brand teams it involves approvals of legal teams then it goes into a long waiting time uh, you know into the roadmap of the development teams and then you know uh, then it gets pushed uh, pushed live right this 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 time could be anywhere you know a few weeks to a few months in a few cases now and and that's that that's when you get to know whether all the changes that you've made were good enough to really rank or not right and then you have to repeat this process so it takes a few weeks to a month in certain cases to to really get a page to 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 where you want to rank it to right um and unfortunately the other challenge is a lot of times these pages you would have made all these changes and then it's sitting there in in those approval cycles because we have not been able to associate value to that changes that you've done right we are not able to kind of say hey these changes that i'm trying to push through this development cycle they are of you know that you know the value of that change is really worth you know 200k uh, us dollars or the value of all these changes put together this can bring uh, uh, you know 10 additional conversions to us each month we've not been able to ascertain that because of which you know dev teams or other thing you know people who are doing up giving approvals they just put it in a queue just like any other change right so what we'll do is now talk about a framework that we've kind of established right um, you know and this is at the heart of alps and we've used this with various of our clients and we've kind of uh, know that it works every time we use it right um, so let's just jump into the framework on how to do this right basically with the seo that you know right and how to get it right the first step is to really decide the page that you're working is the phase that you want to focus on right you know a lot of times you know um you know a post after you work on a page for a little while you realize that this may not be uh, the most valuable page to work on uh, two things to look at one is this page of any strategic importance sometimes they may not be volume associated with a page but you know if it is of strategic importance then you still want to kind of you know uh, optimize that page and ensure that it ranks high the other times you primarily look at volume right you know how you know volume of the keywords that are targeted against the page uh, and then see you know what is the incremental opportunity associated and whether it's worthwhile to really focus that time and attention on this page right so this framework by the way you may not be able to do this every uh, with every page but uh, you want to at least do this with all your important and and and, and your um, uh, the ones that are uh, likely to give you a high return right you know you want to do uh, this framework at apply this framework at least with those pages so the second uh, step in this process is to really score your pages again a lot of people might think that this is a very complex activity right scoring might involve a lot of tools i'll quickly talk about how to do it even without any tool of course you can use tools like there are certain tools in the market or, or which already give you some kind of scoring or you could use tools like alps uh, which automate this whole process and kind of they may make this process more accurate and uh, you know exacting but you could start even without any tool right um you know one way to do this is take your page look at these three aspects right content authority technical like let's for, let's start with content look at the page look at the keywords in question uh, see whether the content on the page is uh, relevant to the query see if it kind of has the right intent see if the elements are optimized right you know and qualitatively put a number between 1 and 10 right rate that page with respect to the query on a 1 to 10 scale right it doesn't have to be accurate you know just rate it whatever you think is right uh, similarly you know look at the kind of links that are coming to the page look at the relevancy of the links and kind of put a number to that 
and um, you know run the page on um, you know on a on a speed test and kind of again uh, you know uh, do a similar thing right you know now now that you've rated your page on all the uh, three aspects um, like i said don't worry about it being accurate just rate them on this one to ten scale now you'll have to do the same on your competitors pages as well right it's in, again this is a very important uh, uh, step in the process we'll we'll show an example why it is important in in a short while but you may have to do this uh, with your competitor pages as well competition in seo is not necessarily your business competitors right and I'm, I'm sure you heard about this but what matters is really who is ranking at the top right doesn't matter it you know a lot of people say hey you know uh, I am a bank and, and I only want to kind of look at other banks as my competitors and I don't want to come you know the the other people who are ranking out there are aggregators and I don't have anything to do with them but in in for the users you know it doesn't matter right you know at the, that stage in the conversion funnel they are um, whatever content is there ranking high that's what they look at so they don't necessarily care whether it's coming from a bank or an aggregator so anybody who ranks ahead of us is really competition in seo so you want to pick a few pages from the top ranking you know from on the, uh, you know from the top 10 results in SERP and score them based on you know um, the similar kind of process that we just talked about right based on whatever you think is right but be consistent when you're rating this whether it's your page or competitors page right and rate them on the same one to ten score now benchmark this right you know those three parameters against the top you know top few uh, ranking pages and identify area um, you know whether it is technical whether it is content whether it's authority that you have a gap gap on right uh, a significant gap on and and that's the area that you'd want to really work on right uh, and sometimes it could be more than one sometimes it could be both content and authority sometimes it could be just content sometimes it could be just technical etc right and then uh, once you've identified this area that you have to work on then get into the specifics around which parameter to focus on and again there's enough material out there we'll also kind of uh, I'll, I'll i'll show a few parameters that uh, are important in each area um, you you know identify the area then get into the specifics pick a few variables that could be of the most that could give you the most impact then optimize them right now optimize them to the best of your knowledge right and don't don't push these changes live yet don't push them you know to your development you know ask your dev teams or you know uh, or um, you know don't put them for approvals yet rescore these pages rescore them just like you know we did in the earlier stage right you now before the benchmarking uh, this is a very important step that most people miss out because you know you think that the changes that you've done are good enough and then you kind of try to push them rescoring kind of gives you and the, the the reason it's important is the there's a long wait from here till you actually see the results so you may want to kind of actually do your you know you, the you know uh, put your best foot forward before you can actually you know get into that weight more otherwise the cycle kind of repeats itself right so by rescoring you're ensuring that you know you are you comfortable with the changes you're comfortable with the you know gaps that you kind of filled and only when you're comfortable that is when you are sending it for approvals and implementation once you implement then you know you you basically measure your results and can keep on improving this framework you know again you could modify this framework to your own uh, in in terms of what works for you but um, here's kind of this is some broad thing that consistently works for us let's take a an example and see how this works right you know here's the first example this is for uh, uh, a page that is currently ranking at 14 again this is these are some real results we try to kind of um, you know hash the domain so that you know we don't talk about any specific company the keyword here that we're talking about again is has a uh, you know search volume about uh, 20,000 so for this industry this is again not a uh, this is, I would say mid, mid funnel kind of keyword not again, you know, very high volume again, not very low 
Um, so we scored this again. We scored these pages, the pages uh, through ALPS, but you know you could pretty much do uh, the same thing uh, in the method that I uh, spoke about a little while ago. Um, you'd probably end up may not end up with uh, those decimals, but you'd have some sense of um, fair use uh, fair. So looking at this seems like authority is where you want to work on and maybe somewhat of content your technical seems to be kind of okay right now this is where the challenge the moment we bring the competition in right it's a completely different picture again this is a real page these are real scores and the moment you bring the competitors it's very clear that for this particular keyword the top ranking pages are not necessarily very competitive right you know are uh, they are not very authoritative um, um, and you know uh, they're in the middle kind of range it's really your relevance that that that's a challenge right your page needs to kind of um, you know uh, talk more about uh, that specific intent of the query or there is maybe you know certain sub topic that is missing things like that right so the gap that needs you need to work on is really the content and not the authority as as you would have you know um, um, arrived at with a, if you did not look at the competition let's take another example again this is a real example right currently ranking at 11 you know 50000 search volume looking at this you would say hey you know i'm more or less doing well maybe you know there's a little scope on content tech technical right um, but my authority is kind of broadly okay right these are the things that you'd end up probably working on but when you start getting the competition right you realize that in this particular case the top ranking pages are very authoritative so unless you really improve the authoritativeness of your page or you know in this particular topic it's going to be difficult to get to the top ranking page so that becomes your primary area of work right so scoring pages will help you identify the core area that you want to work on and once you identified that you now given whether it's content or authority then get into the elements right um, so if you, if it's content like i said at a higher level look at the uh, pages intent look at some of the subtopics that are you know whether you kind of covering all the subtopics um, uh, you know related to that particular topic look at all the elements if they are kind of optimized well and uh, looking at competition gives you a lot of inspiration especially with content right you know uh, content and authority so looking at uh, uh, the top ranking competitors you could look at some of the subtopics that they've covered but you missed out look at for example subheaders like h2s h3s what did they talk about right now what did you miss in your page that gives you ideas then look at their titles how they've optimized that gives you ideas the idea is again to not to copy them but to get some inspiration and you know this benchmarking exercise lays the foundation for the changes that you're going to make and what you see on the right is basically a screenshot from alps you know um, you know alps gives you these scores like i said and the gaps with the top ranking page uh, right out of the blocks and it will give you you know here are the list of uh, some of the um, more important variables right in, in 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 the order of importance of sorts going to authority right authority again look at not just you know sometimes you know the at at the very basic level you may want to look at things like uh, page rating or url rating depending on the tool that you're using um, uh, sometimes those could be misleading because not every link is important right it's relevant links that matter relevant uh, a relevant link is the one that kind of is given in, from a, in a context right look at the context in which the link is 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 given right now that's what will tell you whether the uh, link is relevant or not look at the type of domains that are kind of giving you those links right you know and then um, on the on the right you will see um, you know some of the important variables when you're kind of trying to kind of uh, get to uh, identify things to improve on from a authority perspective uh, getting to technical again you know i would say a few things to look at i think you know with core web vitals are becoming important so you definitely want to look at page speed then uh, 
you look at uh, you know google looks at something called uh, whether the page is uh, well maintained or not and whether the site is well maintained or not again there's a lot of variables that go into it but broadly you could get a sense right if there is basically if you're consistently having a lot of uh, you know um, 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 issues in your uh, technical audit like you know you're missing out on you know uh, certain tags and stuff like that that could pass a signal it doesn't mean you have to definitely fix them but you know that could pass a signal um, sometimes technically it's it's like unlike other things right technically it's more like uh, google is looking at um, the experience of the page and saying hey is there anything on this page that may provide a bad experience to my uh, to my user and you know if it is not then you know beyond that it's not going to kind of incrementally add value to your page like for example on the scale of 1 to 10 right if you if you if you scored your page let's say a 6 or a 6 and a half getting to a 7 and a half may not necessarily add incremental value because all you're looking at is just remove any roadblocks that kind of give a bad experience beyond that the uh, whether you have relevant content whether you are addressing the query in the right form and whether your domain has the authority in that topic or not those are the ones that really matter the most right so um so once you kind of you know identified the changes that you want to make based on these uh, you know variables etc then we talked about rescoring right you know here's an example of what that rescoring looks like looks like for um, assuming you made the changes uh, you know in this particular case you know after we rescored this is where you know the uh, we moved the page to uh, looking at this uh, i'm comfortable right you know i think okay i'm convinced that you know this may rank you know of course using alps will give you um, um, I think a more accurate kind of uh, estimation of uh, the target rank and uh, you know uh, the likely business impact that it could have but you could get a sense of uh, whether you stand a chance to rank uh, where you and at the desired rank that you want to be and then you know this is where I think you want to estimate the impact of this if you are going to be in the you know uh, page you know there are a lot of click-through rates curves uh, curves available use any of them estimate the incremental traffic that you'll get that will help you in making a business case right so those are some uh, important things right uh, and then so to summarize for the first use case we learned not to focus on anything but really on important pages and parameters we learned how to kind of benchmark and get some inspiration from competition and we learned um, you know that rescoring uh, and you know uh, and uh, and and kind of forecasting the impact gives us the the kind of uh, you know ammunition to to use to ensure basically we have a uh, highest likelihood to rank and kind of you know if it gets stuck in the implementation process we have some data to really push it right so with that um i think we'll come to the next uh, use case but before that i think uh, we have uh, um it's time for our uh, first poll heather so launching that now ajay while people are answering that and we'll give everyone about 45 seconds to answer th answer that. We've had a few questions um, of of participants asking, what was the tool for scoring pages? So if you can reiterate that, I think that would help. Great. So the tool is ALPS, A L P S, right? It uh, stands for Analytics Led Platform for Search. Uh, ALPS is, um, you know, um, you know, a platform that is primarily the core purpose of alps is to you know identify very specific reasons for a page to rank or not rank then simulate changes and rescore them right so um uh, again we built alps um, you know about six years ago but we've used it predominantly in kind of you know on the agency side of our business but it, it's worked so well for us that we felt that it, it's time to actually give the product uh, you know as a licensed software to every seo out there and uh, from last year we've been kind of licensing the product so it's alps alps great thanks, thanks for, that. for that yeah so um poll winner it looks like 70 percent are strongly believe that they want to implement something like this so without that can continue on perfect 
cool so we'll jump into our uh, second use case right this is about uh, you know planning and um, you know identifying the potential of seo and things like that so again various um, use cases some people some companies almost do this on a quarterly basis right some companies uh, some teams do this at the beginning of the year to kind of uh, create a roadmap of activities for the year some some companies use it for uh, uh, figuring out where to invest in seo some companies use it uh, to make a business case right whether seo is some is going to be a big um, you know uh, aspect in their overall marketing um, you know initiatives or not so uh, let's just get into how to do this right right so the the um, first step in any planning exercise SEO planning exercise is a comprehensive keyword research I cannot emphasize enough on this right Be, because keywords are really at the core keywords you know while you know people say hey you know key, keywords are no longer important I, I, I it's it's more than keywords it's users typing what the users needs being kind of you know written into that search box and there's no better insight to, to get from the market than understanding that yes specific exact keywords may not be that's important but it is really the 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 uh, the meaning behind those keywords that that the intent behind that right when you accumulate that that is basically going to give you a lot of market insight so the the more comprehensive your research the more likelihood of you getting uh, you know higher value from your seo program a lot of people you know because a comprehensive keyword research involves a large volume of keywords a lot of people kind of you know and it's tedious to do it they they don't necessarily kind of do this process well what ends up happening is you focus on a very small um, aspect of uh, of what is relevant to your um, you know customers and then you kind of miss 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 the entire funnel sometimes you miss the adjacencies etc right so um comprehensive keyword research and we'll talk about you know how to kind of do this very quickly right uh, how to get to a large volume of keywords very quickly then the second uh, step is to organize these keywords especially when you have uh, tens of thousands of words to look at it's very difficult to make any meaning out of that right so grouping these into meaningful buckets meaningful groups gives you a way to for your brain to comprehend what's there right so when you look at 50000 keywords you can't really make anything but if you were to kind of group this into a nice kind of a hierarchy of 400 500 categories etc you you can kind of just look at it and kind of you know a picture of a picture that in your mind and kind of that that may give you a lot of ideas right you know it will give you a good sense of the uh, where the market is and then you know you'll make the right decisions from there and we'll we'll talk about a few ways to kind of do that shortly then once you've identified these themes the next step is to really take each theme and size the opportunity right again very easy we'll talk about how to do that you know you look at the search volume you kind of you know pick any ctr curve and kind of get an estimate of that once you have an estimate of uh, the incremental opportunity that you each from by theme get the difficulty right so one way to do an ideal way to do this would be to repeat the exercise that we did in use case one which is scoring um, um you know but i understand if you're doing this manually it could become are very tedious um, some people use uh, the competition that they get from uh, paid search as a proxy i have a problem in with that approach but if you don't have a better way go ahead and use that because the competition index that you get from paid search is indicative of basically how competitive the keyword is in paid search ads right you know sometimes it's a proxy of how competitive it could be in seo it may be maybe there's a high correlation but there is what we've seen is that competitive index is not correlated with your difficulty to rank just because a page is competitive right a topic is competitive doesn't mean that you need a lot of work to do to rank high maybe you already did a lot of work and you're there you know very little incremental work that you need to do to kind of get to the top right on the other hand there may be this topic which is very high you know top of the funnel kind of topic 
and you probably don't have you know it's a probably an adjacent category for you and you don't have any content there but it's very unlikely for you to rank so it's very difficult for you to rank there right so going with the competition uh, that you get in paid search sometimes could be misleading but if you don't have you know uh, anything else you use that best way to be it should be to once you theme go by each theme score and then kind of you know uh, identify the difficulty right and uh, um once you have that you very easy you know you could use a two by two we'll talk about a little framework on how to kind of you know create like an actionable plan from this right you know prioritize themes that uh, um you know what the exercise that you've done so far gives you basically uh, a set of uh, themes where you need to write new content a set of themes where you need to optimize content a set of themes that you have to uh, focus on authority etc so you will have like you know a, a, a tactical kind of you know plan of sorts at the end of this exercise so let's jump into how to uh, go about doing this right the like i said the keyword research the multiple ways to kind of get this data a simplest form is basically pick any tool you know today most tools give uh, footprint data you put in a dem domain they'll give you footprint data so get foot that footprint data for your domain and a few of your competitors domains right the other source could be your paid search if you already have you know um, a lot of keywords in in your paid search you know bring that then search console could be another way or take a few you know topics within your business take a few features do a little bit of research around that bring those keywords in so there are multiple ways in which you can actually bring all these keywords now create a unique list of keywords from there and then you know um, you know we'll get into the theming process right you know i'll show that in a bit so here's an example um, you know for an you know investment product that we've done right we we started with a massive uh, set of you know uh, 250 300000 keywords and we eventually ended up with close to 70000 keywords right that's the i am showing this example to let you know that that those are the kind of volumes that you should be looking at right keyword research with 300 keywords 500 keywords is not representative of all that seo can drive right you want to know how how much value that's there um, you know um, that your program can drive only then can you achieve it the first step is knowing that right so start with that massive it could take a few days of effort but this few days of effort will give you a lot of returns in the in, in, in later on and and it creates a roadmap for like you know much longer right you know, sometimes you know you, you you have this plan can kind of you know become the only plan that you have for like a couple of years so um, next one so those 70000 keywords you know we've kind of categorized it like this right you know nicely bucketed into this so if i look at this right you know very quickly i can kind of sense what topics exist here right i pretty much get a sense of the business um, in 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 a, in a few minutes so it's important to categorize there's a few ways to this uh, to do to do the theming again a lot of people struggle uh, with doing theming you know they do it in an unstructured way so the list is long and you know difficult becomes difficult to understand even after you theme structuring is important so there are a few ways to do it few dimensions right so when you look at keywords identify dimensions like this like for example type of product could be another one dimension features could be one dimension right um, then you know um marketing funnel can be one dimension right whether these are like you know comparison keywords or buy related keywords things like that so then depending on your industry like for example if it's an e-commerce site attributes of the product like um, you know size color they become important and if it is um, you know uh, if you if you are in uh, less uh, hospitality or travel related businesses healthcare kind of businesses location becomes important like for example hospitals in new york things like that so the once you've identified these dimensions in your keyword then organize it with the most important dimension at the top like for example if you are a healthcare company you want to start with location as your first right uh, and then followed by the 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 type of ailment and you know so so each dimension at a different level so you know if you if you are let's say for example a bank the type of product 
probably would come at the top then features would come next then your marketing funnel would come third and things like that so um, you know once you organize your keywords like this you would probably end up with an excel sheet think of if you're putting them in an excel sheet maybe 300 400 500 rows of groups uh, of themes that you know think of each theme as a topic right and so you pretty much have 500 topics that you need your business is made up of this 500 600 topics and you just need to win in those 500 600 that can translate to 500 600 pages sometimes each theme you know it it can be one to few pages per theme of sorts you know if you were to generalize right on your site so uh, you can very quickly translate these 500 600 pages to basically how much of content you need on the site right um, then you organize them uh, on an excel sheet like this and then you know here are the keywords against this theme this is a search volume this is where you currently rank right this is the traffic that you'd probably get you know at this rank there's hardly any traffic that you'd get but if you were to move to you know page one right this is the potential that you have Right. And then, you know, we talked about scoring the gaps, et cetera. So you kind of, you know, your, your score, competitive score, and the gap. So what you're doing is basically uh, with some quick analysis, getting the potential of each theme and then some sense of difficulty. If you don't have scores, just use the competition index that you'd get and get some sense of difficulty. Or if you don't have difficulty, just go with potential. So this will give you basically, um, you know, uh, the uh, um, potential of each of these then you get you know you could you could kind of uh, pull out data like this right this is this is your the current traffic that you know based on your current ranking and these keywords so you have those 60000 keywords based on your rank against the 60000 keywords and you know pick any C standard ctr curve and kind of you know estimate traffic right this is what you probably currently be getting and on the far right you have the if you were to rank for each one of these keywords at number one position, which is very unlikely, but if you were to kind of rank at number one position for all those branded and non-branded keywords, you'd get your maximum. So this is this 3.3 million in this particular example is what your SEO can drive, right? If this is small based on, you know, then you, you know, based on <coughs> what you know, what your other channels are driving, if you think this, um, you know, if this 2.3 million translates to a certain amount of uh, conversions and revenue, and if that number is small, most likely you did not do your keyword research properly. So you would go back, see if you missed out in any adjacent categories, right? Um, and, and, and kind of do this exercise again. And if this, if this um, you know, opportunity looks massive for you, then you kind of, I think, uh, you know, down the right path, you at least have laid a foundation for um, for the next few years, right? Uh, a, a realistic way to kind of get to opportunities to kind of make some, and we'll we'll share this uh, you know matrix uh, you know uh, after the uh, webinar. So we have created a matrix based on what we've seen with very a lot of our customers over the years. Depending on where you are and depending on the authority of your domain, right? So for example, if your domain rating is 70 and above then your likelihood of moving to you know top three results top five results is is relatively different right so based on that we've kind of arrived at some of uh, some likelihood at different stages if you would apply that right you know those likelihood you'd get to a more realistic kind of situation but you know again doesn't have to be right you take a guess like for example one way to do this is uh, let's say you have you know uh, 100 keywords on or uh, uh, 20 themes on page two very unlikely that all of them you'll get to top three ranks maybe two out of the 20 you'll get to top three maybe another three you'll get to you know bottom of the top page right and the remaining will continue to be on page two right so that you know distribution will probably work better for you and you'll arrive at a realistic estimate uh, at the end of that process 
Um, so this gives you, uh, you know, a lot of ammunition to kind of, you know, go talk to your executives to make investments to kind of ask for resources and things like that, or to even convince yourself whether what you're doing will actually, you know, is there any any any, any value that there is to the business, right? You know, for the work that you're doing. The next, of course, you know, the themes that we saw here, right? If you were to kind of, you know. Put those themes based on difficult to, to rank and opportunity size you would immediately get like a you know calendar plan of sorts right you know the ones themes which have the lowest uh, uh, difficulty but high opportunity those are the ones that you want to immediately kind of address because those are the ones that will you know very easily win then the uh, you know the long-term goals are where the opportunity is high but you know uh, there's a high difficulty as well so that needs some work right you need to probably kind of build a lot of supporting content build you know build some do some link building programs things like that right and then you know these are some uh, areas there where you could do some experiments to rank so that's kind of you could take an exercise like this and eventually end up with a very tactical plan right so just to summarize so with the second use case we try to kind of identify the value that seo can drive and then we created a tactical plan of which topics to go after which themes to go after uh, in the short term and long term right uh, with that we kind of come to the, our second poll heather great so do you know the addressable market size of your SEO for your business? We'll give everybody about 30 seconds to answer that. Great. Looks like we have a winner. Yeah, we share a similar approach to arrive at the opportunity by 55%. Great. Perfect that Heather great so we've got a few minutes left we'll take some questions so thank you all for participating we've got you know a lot of questions we're not going to be able to get to all of them today but like we said we will definitely follow up and send them your way afterwards so let's get to the first one what are your thoughts on how to approach benchmarking scoring of groups of pages versus individual ones in the case of large websites when dealing with one page at a time and it's not efficient? Um, I would say the challenges with each page are different, right? I, I understand, you know, doing this at, uh, you know, individually doing it at every keyword level is difficult, right? And it doesn't make sense because, you know, a page, each page can have multiple keywords targeted against it. But the challenge with, uh, you know, uh, doing at groups is maybe you focused on one aspect of an, a group of pages. Let's say, for example, you have a topic like, you know, uh, travel credit cards, right? And, and then you have 10 pages against that. Maybe your focus was heavily on selling the product and maybe you did some, you know, comparative kind of uh, content there, but you probably left out a lot of, you know, awareness content and consideration content. When you kind of look at group of pages, you'll miss out on that aspect, right? You know, what will happen in this particular case is when you look at individual pages, your pages would actually, your, your uh, you know, gaps would be lower in the lower funnel pages, but your gaps would be higher in the higher funnel pages and you'll miss that out when you group them all. So I understand that it could be a little, time consuming, but it's probably worth the effort. And that's where I think some uh, tools can kind of help you automate that process. Great. So how often should we be doing a comprehensive keyword research? I would say it's definitely not more than once or twice a year i would say you know you know start with you know uh, at the beginning of the year or whenever right you know if you start now you probably don't need to get back to it you uh, know in, in a few uh, quarters at least typically every time you do a keyword research exercise you end up with a tactical plan like we talked about right you know you have you have a few topics that you need to work on whether writing content or optimizing and you know 
doesn't make sense to go back to um, to planning before you've executed on your previous plan. So once you got to a certain stage, you could kind of, you know, I'll give an analogy of, uh, you know, product management. The way we do it in product management is we constantly talking to users, right? So there are new ideas coming all the way, all the time. So every time we get an idea, we put it into a roadmap, right? You know, think of it as an Excel sheet and we are dumping these ideas into that roadmap. We don't look at them, we just keep dumping them. And ev once every quarter, right, you know, all the product managers, we come together and then we kind of look at those things and prioritize those ideas and pick a few. So. You could you could do something similar every time you hear you know some additional new topics that are coming put them in a in a roadmap and you know prioritize once every six months on which ones makes most sense for you. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, everything that you've outlined and you know trying to find that focus, right? I mean, if that was something that they had to do more often, um, it would consume all of their time. So I think that's a great approach. So is there a way that you can automate the organization of keywords into into themes, or is that always a manual process? Uh, you can use Alps to do that, uh, but yeah, there are a few other tools who are trying to do that, but Alps def definitely does that in an automatic fashion. Uh, you could, if you're trying to do it yourself, there are a few ways, like I said, identifying dimensions is important, right? You know, um, the way to, do that maybe is you know extract a few words right you know the most commonly occurring words um, then you know divide those words into these dimensions maybe some of those words are um, around product features some of those words are around intent like comparison by etc some of those words are locations so you identifying these dimensions and kind of you know put words in in an excel sheet then you have you know think of it as columns right you know each column is one dimension and you put an yes or a no uh, against each keyword whether that so and you know if you if you have identified 100 such words you can do a v look up in in excel and kind of you know fill this you know uh, you know sheet very very quickly right and you could use some automation like that but um, um, the other way is just you know based on uh, take the first dimension features think of all the features you could think of right you know search for those keywords group them in the first bucket then go to the next category then that's another way of doing it but uh, uh, there are tools like you know like Alps who could do this much more efficiently great so let's talk about local SEO for a second so if, if somebody is optimizing for local you know should they still be looking at a very high volume keywords exclusively Local, I think, is is a is a little different, um, but you know, again, the analogy kind of works, right? You know, um, you know, like for example, it's the same set of keywords people are searching. The results are just local, right? For example, if I'm looking at cancer hospitals, right, um, the results may be local, but uh, you know, uh, so cancer hospitals versus a specific type of cancer hospital which has a lower volume. Right, you know, again, relevance is also important which business you are in, but the volumes even at a local level are proportional. So um, it, it, it probably still makes sense to look at uh, volumes. Great. So how often is the rescore, how often should the rescore be done? Um, Any time we apply a change or should it be something that we're looking at like quarterly, monthly, you know, what does that cadence look like? The, it's actually uh, you'll be surprised with my answer our writers for example do this to anywhere between 12 to 15 times before they finalize the content right so alps for example has a simulation engine where is you know you can put your content in an editor and then they keep you know they make changes and then put it in the editor and rescore to ensure it reaching where it should they do this process it's almost like gamifying it right each scoring is a process of getting you know uh, increasing the chances with every time you know every rescoring you're making modifications and improving it so it's 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 uh, you know 12 to 14 times uh, that they use because of course they have a tool but uh, in the absence of a tool you want to do it at least once to be sure that you know the changes that you've done uh, you are convinced that you know it is it is going to make impact yeah, that makes sense. 
So what about thoughts on a parent page or a top of the funnel page with thorough coverage? Should an IT services company take a parent route, a parent page route or like individual blogs? Would those be better? I, I, I think there's no one answer to it, right? You know, it's like, you know, if you think of, you know, I'd, I'd say there are various ways to answer this question. Let me take one such example, right? You know, think of an iceberg concept, right? Um, you know, what you may be ranking for maybe one, you know, broad query, let's say, for example, if you if you're trying to sell a CRM product, right, you may you may be thinking, okay, you know, you want to rank for any time someone types uh, CRM uh, tools, you want to rank for that. But to be able to rank for C a broad query like CRM tools, there is basically a lot of authority that you have to build around that topic called CRM, right? And the way, and the way uh, for a search engine to know uh, whether you have an authority in a particular topic or not is to look at all the subtopics in that area right and you know the search engines know how to get that they use these networks right network of keywords network of pages and they know how to group those networks together cluster them together so if crm is a node in that you know in a not network Right? There are a lot of sub nodes under that, which is basically all the subtopics in CRM. You're an authority in CRM only when you have a lot of, the least that you want is have coverage and content across all these subtopics. That's a signal that you're sending to the search engine that, hey, my business is about this particular topic. I don't have a single page on this, right? That's how the search engines know. Like for example, American Express can have one page on soccer doesn't even though you know amex is uh, you know domain rating is very high it's very unlikely that it'll rank for that page right because it doesn't have the supporting content so i would say you you'd want to kind of really build a lot of different types of content around the topic uh, now coming to one services page versus multiple block pages the product type of google in its kind of you know um, you know uh, qa guidelines kind of suggests that people in their search for products move across different stages of the funnel time and again right so they today search engines are promoting pages especially product pages where multiple types of uh, information is covered in the same page right if you are like which is why the all the aggregators are using you know those kind of pages so they they on the same page they talk about product features they compare it with the competition they have faqs so that one page may really you know kind of address a lot of questions but to build authority for that one page you still need a lot of supporting content i hope that's a long answer but i hope you know it addresses your it's a good answer. So with about three minutes left, I'm going to try, let's try to get this last question in, although this might be another long one. But, you know, Jay, how would you go about optimizing the website, keeping in mind, you know, the algorithm, the core um, update that's coming, you know, this May? I would say <clears throat> the, uh, the core update you know is like i said you know let, let's get into the a little bit of bottom of this right you know i said there are three broad components there's you know do you do you have content that's relevant to the queries then do you have authority in that specific con you know specific topic that the user is searching for and the third one is is there anything that is blocking your you know blocking the experience of the user right is there anything on your page or your website that gives a bad experience to the user right and page speed is one such thing if it's taking forever to load your page if it takes you know especially on a mobile device today people are very impatient if a page takes you know um, 10 seconds to load you know they move on right so that's what the search engines are looking for right if your page is basically taking 
a little bit of time longer than an average page then you need to worry about otherwise i don't think you know let's say your page is loading in one second by making it 0.8 seconds i don't think it's going to improve your ranking significantly it will of course improve if your page is taking eight seconds today to load and you brought it down to two seconds then you are even in the consideration set right that's when you're saying hey you know is it really worthwhile showing this page but um, if it's already let's say in in a respectable range trying to kind of really focus a lot of attention on that um, may not give you uh, a lot of results so that would be my take so i would say identify pages which needs significant improvements and bring them to a respectable stage rather than trying to really get every second uh, improvement of sorts because beyond a certain stage it just gets difficult right you know to to improve page speeds because there's a lot of code change that you'll have to do right some things are simple compressing images things like that those are the simple simple stuff right you know you want to kind of you know global css versus local those are some of the easy things quick fixes but beyond that it gets difficult great sorry a long answer again yeah no we figured it would be no worries so we are at time so you know with that ajay i'm going to say many thanks from search engine journal for being our guest here today and we've reached the end of our time so it was a great conversation i'm sorry that we couldn't get to everyone's questions but the content was fantastic thank you for sharing so expect a follow-up email with all the questions along with answers from today's show and please stick around again for that short survey it'll take no more than five minutes and it does help us improve webinars overall with that we bid you adieu have a great day thanks thank you everyone thank you heather and search engine